This is your Storm Tracker Team forecast first. Good evening and thanks for joining us. This is your forecast first. Well, not a bad way to finish out the summer season. Plenty of sunshine today as we continue to move forward into the fall season. Well, a nice welcome out there. We've got a pretty sunny and a very quiet forecast for much of your work week. We'll take a look at it coming up in just a few. Local 33 News at 5 starts right now. And coming up, a man is in police custody after a deadly shooting. What he says happened just moments before his gun went off. And the family of the LSU freshman who died in her dorm room just a few days ago, speaking out about her untimely death. Live in Baton Rouge Proud, you're watching Local City for News at 5. And a good evening here at 5 o'clock. I'm Harrison Gold. And I'm Kelly Ann Bailey. Thanks for joining us for NBC Local 33 News at 5. And now to a crime tracker alert. Chanja Paho Parish deputies have a man in custody after a shooting Friday in Hammond that left a teenager dead. 22 year old Tyrius Young charged with manslaughter tonight. Deputies say he was fighting with 19 year old Adrius Warren when a handgun he was holding accidentally went off. Warren was shot in the chest and later died as a result. Stray gunfire also hit Young's mother. She's since been released from a hospital as the investigation into that shooting continues. And an investigation is underway following an overnight shooting at a nightclub in Livingston Parish. According to the sheriff's office there, deputies responded to a call of shots fired about 1 o'clock this morning. Two males were found to be suffering from gunshot wounds. Investigators say that those men were taken to the hospital and they were arguing before shots were fired. But uh, after they were taken to the hospital, they have since been released with non-life-threatening injuries. Continuing coverage here tonight with friends and family in D.C. mourning the loss of the teenager found dead in her dorm room at LSU last Tuesday. Maraca Dennis was a freshman at LSU and a native of Washington, D.C. Maraca's friends say she excelled at everything she did, including ROTC, working as a lifeguard, writing for her high school newspaper, and volunteering with young kids. Dennis's family gathered at a softball field she used to play on when she was younger to remember her life. You know, I don't think it still hit me, still kind of walking around in the days. Um, you know, you, when you text, text your daughter, she'll never text back or call back. Now her cause of death still unknown at this time. Authorities are also still waiting on that toxicology report. And the New Orleans Saints are without Drew Brees in today's game. Head coach Sean Payton, however, has never won a game without number nine. We're going to check in now with Go Nation sports reporter Chessa Boucher to see how the team is holding up against Seattle. Chessa? Yeah, Kelly, and going into this NFC clash with Seattle and New Orleans, there were a ton of question marks, but the Saints have answered the call. The score is currently 27 New Orleans early in the third. The Seahawks, with a sloppy start in the black and gold, made them pay for it with a 53-yard punt return, followed by a fumble recovery by Vaughn Bell to give the Saints a 13-7 lead. Then right before the half, Teddy Bridgewater, who started for Breeze, connects with Alvin Kamara. It's a first TD of the season for Kamara, so big time play by both special teams and the defense. Sean Payton has to be happy with their first play half. Coming up later in sports, we'll have the latest on the game, but for now, Kellyanne, I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Chelsea. Well, all eyes are on Baton Rouge after pro football player Odell Beckham Jr. teams up with Nike to release some new sneakers. Take a look at these. Beckham is, of course, a former LSU wide receiver who now plays for the Cleveland Browns, but these shoes are a variation of the OBJ Joyride Fly Knit and a feature on here is the see-through strap that actually reads Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And then it says, best after May 19th, 2014. That's the same day that Beckham signed his first pro contract. Now, the shoes are going to retail for about $200. They're going to be made available in select stores and online starting Friday. And now to a consumer alert. The unemployment rate in Louisiana remains at an 11-year low. The Louisiana Workforce Commission says statewide unemployment is down to 4.3 percent. Baton Rouge has gained nearly 2,000 jobs since this time last year. The commission cites private sector opportunities as the driving force and says education and health services are the most rapidly expanding industries. Well, today in Baton Rouge, some LSU students giving back to sick kids with a little bit of walking. 
The dance marathon group at LSU held a superhero 5K walkathon to raise money for a Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital at Woldenburg River Park in New Orleans. That group raising more than $1,000 at the event. It was all themed superhero to show the kids never stop fighting, and we shouldn't either. We've always believed that those our miracle kids, the ones that we work with, are superheroes in their own right. They overcome tremendous medical adversities and come out stronger than ever, and they never stop fighting. So we wanted to kind of take this day to honor them, to recognize them, and to remember to never stop fighting for them as well. Now, this does mark the first walkathon the group has ever done, and members do hope they can hold more of these kinds of events in the coming years. And people are now enjoying the last few hours of the Baker Buffalo Festival. That festival once centered around a rodeo, but it now focuses on schools, family, and food, and specifically one of my favorites, buffalo wings. For the fourth year in a row, a wing king was crowned. The event raises money for Baker schools and other interests for the city. All of our proceeds from this festival is to help support our Baker school system. And it's just be exciting to see such. Big crowd comes out and support us, and it's family oriented. And you just see the kids having so much fun as well as the adults. And this is actually the first year that the festival has been so popular that it's been extended through multiple days. Coming up at 10 o'clock, you'll want to stick around because we'll have NBC Local 33's Abby Rocha tell us who made the Wing King this year. All right, something to go right there with it. Craft beer, just in time for Louisiana's Craft Beer Week. The Abita Brewing Company is out with a brew for people looking to cut the carbs but keep the craft. The Hop 99 is an IPA style beer with only 99 calories and less than three net carbs. The brewer says Hop 99 is one of the, the first low calorie, low carb IPAs on the craft circuit. It's now available for purchase all year round. Still to come here at 5, we'll tell you whether this weekend's record-breaking show in the Music City was enough for LSU football to rise up the AP ranks. And a pair of police officers in Louisiana share a very special bond. We'll have their story next on NBC Local 33 News at 5. All right, here's a story like father, like son, an inspiring story about two Hammond police officers, one second career and dedicated, uh, dedicated to his community. But as NBC's Jose Diaz Ballard reports, there is a twist when it comes to this special father son cop duo. 
At age 64, grandfather of 13, Jim Graves Sr. has started his second act. Here's daddy helping Papa with his race car. He's following in the footsteps of his son, Jimmy Jr. The pair now co workers on the police force about an hour north of New Orleans in Hammond, Louisiana. For them to let us ride together is. He's just beyond words. Jim Sr. graduated from the academy with honors just last month. And now he's a volunteer reserve with a squad. You still got your notes on that from yesterday? His inspiration? Junior. A cop since 2009, but now known around the station as Sergeant Graves. It's been an awesome experience so far. I'm trained by one of, you know, what I consider the best in the in the business. The newest recruit. Are you ready for tonight? Getting rave right. reviews. I've always gone to him for advice anyway, so he's like fitting great into his new role. He always knows the right thing to say at the right time. And I can bounce stuff off of this guy too. He's got a pretty bit of um, history behind him. Whether it's on patrol or working the beat. We're probably two minutes out. They share more than just blood, a profound dedication to community and each other. I want to be a peace officer because that's what I would like to do. I'd like to bring peace, peace to everybody in this, in this parish. When the person backing you up is your father, it's just you know he's going to be there 100%. Nobody's going to hurt my daddy. <laughs> you know we're going to, we're going to take care of each other. Captain Jim Richardson says this pair makes his team stronger. We welcome the opportunity for the families because it, it kind of brings everybody together and bonds everybody. But no matter who's the boss. In this crime fighting family, well, <laughs> some things never change. I wanted to be just like my dad when I was little. I still want to be like him. And everyone wants to be like dad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> be like Mike, be like dad. I don't know. So, <laughs> are we doing uh, weather that? or traffic <laughs> That's here? That's traffic. We gotta, here. Yeah, like uh, that. yeah, first of all, again, keeping an eye on the roadways out there. This is between, you're looking at the Gonzales exit. So, this is right now Highway 30 between there and before you get to Gonzales in that eastbound lane. That's where there is an accident out there, a fatality. I'd like to report. So again, just avoid that area if at all possible because right now we're starting to see some decent delays on the interstate system. However, again, nothing getting picked up currently on our traffic camera at this point. So here you go. Here's the big story. Weather-wise, as we step into the fall season, we've got a lot of sunshine out there with high sitting in the lower 90s. And guess what? That just puts us a little bit above normal. But there could be a cold front on the way. We'll talk more about that after the break. Now, your Storm Tracker team forecast with Jesse Gunkel. 
Welcome back. Well, we've got a gorgeous shot on our live tower cam out there. Just minimal clouds today. Overall, very pleasant. A little bit of a light breeze out there. Winds are currently out of the east southeast at about nine miles per hour. And obviously, this is the takeaway. We still hit the 90s out there for the last day of summer. Feel like temperatures, obviously, just one degree above. Main takeaway here is that our temperatures will trend slightly above normal, but overall, not too bad in the coming days. Right now, we should be sitting around 87, so putting us four degrees above. Above average, we started out at a nice 69 degrees this morning. How about that? It's been a while since we've dropped into the 60s. Keeping an eye on your Doppler radar, it's a clear, it's a quiet picture outside. Overall, really not much to worry about. There is a front moving into portions of, I would say, the Midwest and moving all the way into the high plains at this point around the Dallas area. Most likely, however, as we make our way into the next couple days, I don't see it pushing through. But yeah, we could get a little bit of a break, obviously, because of very very large ridge is going to move into place, and that's going to keep away those clouds, and therefore we're not going to have to worry about rainfall for at least the first half of the week. We're going to hold off those showers until Thursday and Friday. So watch your future cast out there, clear and quiet overnight. We'll start out your Monday morning, very pleasant, upper 60s, lower 70s, as we make our way into those afternoon hours, still clear and quiet across the board, and yet we may not even see a cloud until maybe Wednesday afternoon. So here you go, just showing you the chance for rain over the next seven days here and for most of us we're going to be sitting at about 10 percent or less as you notice we may get one or two brief showers but a lot of that rainfall it's going to hold off until the end of the week and as we move into the upcoming weekend we're also keeping a very close eye on the tropics right now we've got two name storms a little bit closer to us and the possibility of another one just coming off the coast of Africa you can see still very unorganized at this point but the first one is tropical storm Jerry which continues to stay steady at this point when Aren't really strengthening much out there. Current wind speeds are at 65 miles per hour, a couple gusts up to about 75, and eventually that's going to hook back out into the central Atlantic and move well away from the U.S. The one that formed early this morning, well, that was Tropical Storm Karen. Currently expected to not really strengthen much, but the concern is going to be going across Puerto Rico and some islands out there before starting to hook back a little bit. But long range models, luckily for us, are keeping it away from the Gulf of Mexico. So at this point, no immediate threat for us as it looks like it's going to stay out in the Atlantic through its life. Quiet start to autumn out there as we'll be seeing plenty of sunshine, a rather dry period for us, holding off the showers until the end of the week. And yes, we will continue to keep our daytime highs and even overnight lows just a little bit, just a tad above normal. 74 tonight, fair skies, should be a calm picture out there. We partnered up with iHeartRadio of Baton Rouge. Get your weather on the go. And here is that seven-day picture, 91 for the first day of fall with mostly sunny skies. Again, really a beautiful start. Tuesday, plenty of sunshine, a high of 90, dropping down to about 69, heading into your Thursday. One or two possible showers out there as we make our way into Friday. That's when we'll get back to a few isolated daytime heating showers. We'll be right back to sports.
Week three has been pretty brutal to the New Orleans Saints, losing Drew Brees to a thumb injury and trying to figure out what to do next without the record breaking number nine. But Sean Payton is up for the challenge. However, it isn't going to be an easy one. The Saints are 0 and 3 against the Seattle Seahawks. In Seattle, that is. I don't think anybody saw this coming, but the Saints are currently up 27 to 7 over Seattle in the third. The first two scores for the black and gold came from special teams and the defense. But right before the half, Teddy Bridgewater got in on the action with Alvin Kamara for his first TD of the season. The Saints team stepping up big in this one in a very hostile environment, not to mention in the rain. Sean Payton has to like what he's seen from his team so far. The LSU Tigers had no problem offensively against the Commodores this weekend, setting more school records. Joe Burrow's 357 yards, or first half passing yards, are the most by a QB against an SEC defense in the last 15 years. Jamar Chase has the most reception yards in a game by an LSU wide receiver since 2013, and that was back when Odell Beckham Jr. wore the purple and gold. LSU's 231 total points is the most points through the first four games in SEC history. For more on this record-breaking season by the Tigers, Go Nation Sports Director Brian Holland has more from the Music City. In a city that certainly judges its performers by its latest record, Joe Burrow now has the latest and greatest six touchdowns on the afternoon. That is an LSU football record. Six touchdowns in one game. And oh, by the way, now 17 on the season. That equals the most by an LSU thrower since 2013. And the Tigers only four games in. Joe is really incredible. That's something I can say. Uh, I mean, Joe has his moments, you know, he's real classy, then he has that, uh, that demeanor about it, so he gets feisty, so I like the feisty Joe. What does he do when he gets feisty? Oh, he starts talking a little trash, you know, he gets, <laughs> he gets a little mug on his face every here and there. I mean, the, the things that he does um, and how he prepares is crazy. Uh, the things that he's doing on the field is all just paying off, it's, he's just cashing it in. I think that there's more to come, I really do. I think that uh, Joe is a fantastic player. He has a fantastic coach, Steve Vinsminger, we have a great plan. And as long as we can protect the quarterback, we're going to make big plays here at LSU, and I expect that. But when Joe was asked about the offense's performance, well, it may not be the grade you were expecting. I say we were B today. Um, we were really good in the first half. Um, two turnovers that we can't have uh, cost us points. Um, so we got some things to face, but there's still a lot to be happy about. All right, for your Go Nation coverage here in Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Brian Holland. Let's send it back to you. Thanks so much, Brian. Southern's offense struggled in Tallahassee again, or last night against Florida A&M. Jags totaled 256 yards with just 69 on the ground after 407 the previous week. In the air, they finished with 187. Thanks in part to this man, Jamar Washington. He finished with five catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. Southern will need him as they travel to Arkansas Pine Bluff next weekend. That's your look at sports. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
<laughs> All right, Mr. Logic, one last check of weather. Yeah, well, the logic says here that we've got a lot of sunshine and really a nice introduction to the fall season. Yeah, it may not feel like the fall like weather that you want. It's still going to feel like summer for a few more days, but at least we won't have to worry about clouds. We won't have to worry about rainfall. Every once in a while, we'll get a nice little breeze out there. And all in all, again, still pretty nice until the end of the week. That's when we'll see the possibility of an isolated shower or two. And hopefully, hopefully another cold front arrives, but I don't see anything happening over the next seven. Of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on that I-10 situation as well. Correct. I can't wait until the first day of fall. I'm so excited. Oh, we're getting there. It's almost here. So close. So all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us this evening, and we'll be back here tonight at 10 o'clock. That's right. NBC Nightly News coming up next. In the meantime, news, weather, sports, all at your fingertips. See you at 10.